There are a lot of mistakes you can make when you're first starting out with low content publishing and you're gonna make more than one. Making mistakes is just a part of the process, so it's not really a cause for concern. But if you can avoid at least a few of them, you'll have much more success much faster. These are 10 of the biggest low content publishing mistakes and how to avoid them. Mistake number one is not validating your idea. Before you spend any amount of time actually creating the book, you wanna have a pretty good idea that real people are actively searching for that book. Now you can do that through some niche research. Now, unfortunately, there is just simply no way around research. It has to be done. And if you just want a really simple way to validate your idea, you can take a look at this video right here. Mistake number two is not knowing your target audience. Now a book that you create for say like a 60 year old female executive, that's gonna look a lot different than say a book that you create for a teenage boy. Now that sounds really obvious, but there are so many books out there that are just super generic looking. And when I see them, I really can't tell who the book is meant to be targeted toward. When you create any sort of book, it should really speak to the person that it's intended for. That's the only way it's really gonna grab that person's attention when they're scrolling through all of those hundreds of results. So before you sit down and create any book, just get a really clear picture in your mind of exactly who the person is that you are designing for. That's going to inform all of your design choices and even your language choices as well. You wanna think about age, gender, what they do for a living, um, you know, are they in school? What are they taking? What are their interests? What are their hobbies? And it is worth doing that even for your low content books. Mistake number three is not niching down far enough. Now let's say you wanna get into the coloring book space. There's like five bazillion coloring books on Amazon right now. So if you just throw up a generic looking coloring book, you're probably not gonna gain any sort of traction. So just think about how far you can niche that down. Is it like, I don't know, a coloring book of barnyard animals aimed at three to five year olds? Or is it a stress relief coloring book aimed at elementary school teachers? Just drill down as far as you can and once you do that, you'll find a lot less competition. Mistake number four is violating copyright and trademark. Now this really seems like a no brainer, but there are so many people out there that do it. I get asked questions around this all the time in my Facebook group because some of my students, they're on Amazon and they're seeing people posting like Disney princess themed coloring books or you know, Marvel themed this, that, and the other. And of course, this is a huge no-no and it can definitely get your account banned. So you wanna avoid anything copyrighted or trademarked like the plague. And that doesn't just go for design, that's anything in your title information and even the backend keyword slots. Those keyword slots, they're hidden from view, but Amazon still knows what's in there and you can get in trouble even for putting those trademark words in your keyword slots. So don't do that either. Mistake number five is missed opportunities. Again, A plus content is a great way to showcase more of the interior of your book, to showcase some of the other books that your brand has to offer and just show a little bit more of your brand in general so that you can be appealing to the right people. Another major missed opportunity is creating an email list. Now I know so many people out there do not have an email list and I can kind of understand why. It is a little bit of extra work to get going and it is a really slow build. You're not just gonna wake up next week with a thousand people on that email list but it is worth it because if you're still doing this in a year's time, two years time, three years time, that email list is going to build over time. And as it does, each time you put a new book out, you can then promote that book to your growing email list. That's gonna mean more sales sooner. It's also gonna mean more reviews sooner. You can actually ask the people on your email list for a review. So this is a huge missed opportunity. And again, it's gonna take a little bit of time to build, but it is gonna be so worth it in the end. And if you're wondering how to get people onto your email list, all you really need to do is create a relevant and valuable freebie. So this could you know, usually be like a PDF, but it could even be a video file or an audio file or something like that. Something that's related to the general topic of your book. And you can just place a link to that on the inside of your book, whatever it is. It could be, you know, maybe it's a recipe book and you're offering a free, you know, 10 recipes, 10 smoothie recipes or something like that. So then you just put in the front of your book, download some free smoothie recipes here, you put the link, and if that freebie is enticing enough, you're gonna get some of your buyers of your book onto your email list that way. So a little bit of extra effort, but it's totally worth it. Mistake number six is poor design, and this is a big one. I do have to say over the past few years, the design of a lot of the low content books out there has dramatically improved, which is great, but there's still a lot of junk out there. So sometimes with poor design, it's just formatting issues. So something I see quite often is just an off-centered cover. 
So it'll be off center by like an inch or something, which obviously looks unprofessional and like a huge mistake. It can also be messed up bleeds. It can also be just like really odd sized text. So something that most people don't do, which everybody should do, is just print off a copy of your cover before you submit it so you can actually see it in person and assess like, is this text legible? Um, is it too big? Or, you know, is it bigger or smaller than I actually intended it to be? It makes a huge difference when you're seeing something up on screen and then holding it in your hand physically. So if you've got a printer at home, I definitely recommend printing off not just the cover, but the entire interior or at least one page of every section of your interior, just so you can see it physically and make sure that everything looks exactly as you intended it when you were designing it on your screen. And just in general, make sure that you do actually have a good eye for design. And if you're not sure, ask for some feedback from someone that does have a good eye for design and isn't just gonna blow some smoke up your butt. Mistake number seven is being a copycat. Jumping on a trend can be great, but you still need to think about what is going to make your book different from all those other books that are following the same trend. Do you have a unique angle to offer? And what would make someone buy your book over everyone else's? You also have to be thinking about this if you're using interior templates. Templates can be great, they can save you a lot of time, but you still need to spend a little bit of time customizing them so that they're different from the probably dozens if not hundreds of other people that are using the same templates. So think about ways that you can customize those templates. Can you add or remove certain design elements? Can you swap out the fonts so that they're a little bit more aligned with whoever your target audience is? You don't have to make sweeping changes, but as many little tweaks that you can make, it's just gonna help your book stand out a little bit more. Mistake number nine is starting ads before you've had any organic sales. Now, of course, ads are a fantastic way to amplify your results. They're not gonna create results out of thin air though. If you've put out a bunch of books and haven't made a single sale yet, putting ads on those books is not going to help. You gotta have your foundations in place, so good research, good design, and when a few sales start to trickle in organically, that's a good time to start ads. Now, once you've been at it for a little while and you've really got the hang of ads because that is a whole other beast unto itself, then at that point, you're probably gonna get to a place where you can publish a book and put an ad on it right out of the gate because you already know how to do your research and you already know what a good design looks like. Mistake number nine is going for quantity rather than quality. Now we all know that there is a volume aspect to this game. You're gonna to have to create dozens, sometimes even hundreds of books if you really wanna make hundreds, thousands of dollars a month. But you shouldn't be sacrificing quality in order to just pump out the numbers. Now, of course, on the other side of things, you don't wanna spend like three to four months just putting out your very first book either. There is a little bit of a sweet spot between those two extremes. You don't wanna be pumping out full volume, sacrifice and quality, but you also don't wanna to be too precious about those one or two books that you're putting out there. Finally, the last mistake is having unrealistic expectations. We all want amazing results in the least amount of time, but this is going to take a little bit of time to see those results start coming in. You might not get any sales on your first five or even 10 books. I've mentioned one of my favorite Low Content Profits Academy students before, Kim George, you can check out her channel. I've linked to it down below where she talks all about her low content publishing journey. But she took 30 books before getting her first sale and now she is making six figures. So just because you don't have sales on those first few books, it doesn't mean you need to give up just yet. There are lots of little steps to this process and if you can just tweak one or two of them, you might find out what's going wrong and get sales to start coming in. If you have been at this for a little while and you haven't had any sales yet, check out this video here and that's gonna help you diagnose the problem. And if this entire thing of low content publishing is brand new to you and you'd like to learn a little bit more about it and how you can get started, download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day. I've linked to that down in the description below. You can also join my free Facebook group, Low Content Profits, also linked to down below. And if you like this video, please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell too if you wanna be notified every time I put out one of these videos every Monday. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.